Hello everyone. So I'm Simon. I'm a PhD student and R&D engineer at Smart Impulse. I will present to you uh, this afternoon uh, the shared data set for energy desegregation in commercial buildings. So it's not only just uh, a data set. It will I, I will talk about uh, commercial buildings, data analysis, modelization, and simulation. So all this talk is about uh, uh, answering that question. How to evaluate NILM algorithms? <coughs> so it's uh, quite uh, sim not simple, but a usual question. But the constraints I have is we want to do this for commercial buildings using high frequency current voltage measurements and also unsupervised, unsupervised algorithm. So let me start the talk with uh, two questions. So the first one is, uh, who of you uh, is using high frequency current and voltage uh, data in the, in the audience? Okay, 15 people around. And uh, who of you is uh, working on commercial buildings? Okay, and uh, how many of you are working both on commercial buildings and high frequency data? Okay, nice, five of six, six, six people. So to go back to the, to the question, the first idea would be to use uh, real measurements. It means that uh, you put a smart plug uh, on all the device of your building. So if you, if you go on a commercial building like this one, probably you will have thousand or I don't know how many equipment, but a lot. And it's way too expensive. You can do it for a building, but you can do it uh, at scale. The second idea would be to use simulated data. And this is where we are going. So uh, let's just take a, a moment to, uh, to feel the difference between commercial and residential buildings. Here in blue, you have uh, the typical load curve for uh, commercial buildings. So you have seven days of consumption. And in red, you have the similar plots for a residential one. So if we, if we want to, to describe the differences, we say, Okay, the commercial buildings, the total consumption is, is smoother. Uh, in absolute value, it's higher. And also, we can see that the seasonality is more dominant in uh, commercial buildings. It means that from one day to another, we can see similar patterns, much more than in residential buildings. So in the first part uh, of this talk, uh, we will uh, quantify those uh, those, those feelings with statistical uh, analysis. So why doing a statistical analysis? There, is, there are three main reasons. The first one is understanding the, the differences, as we have just done uh, with feelings. The second one is designing metrics for evaluating the realisticness of simulations. The, the idea is simple. If we can uh, measure, if we can evaluate metrics on real buildings, then we can evaluate the same metrics on our simulations and see if the simulation and the real buildings share the same properties and the same metrics. And finally, the, the last reason is to develop assumptions for NIM algorithms. So to design good algorithms, the best things to do is uh, look at the data and, uh, and, and go deep into the data. So I briefly uh, explained the methodology of this, uh, of this analysis. We used public data sets uh, with total consumptions at least uh, 1 over 30 Hertz. So there is this list of uh, data sets available at the moment of the study. I put uh, the comp data set in red because there is this, this was the only uh, commercial building data set at, the, at that moment. And we used also a private data set, which, uh, comp which is made of commercial buildings measurements at high frequency. And finally, uh, we've constructed metrics that discriminate very well commercial and residential buildings. We will focus mainly on three of them. The seasonality, as we said before. The power derivatives distribution. Power, der power derivatives, it's uh, the, um, basically the change in the load curve of your total consumption. And the distribution is the, the histogram of that uh, changes uh, for several uh, days. 
And the final one uh, is a matrix on uh, high frequency data on, uh, on current waveforms. It's the total harmonic distortion. It's, uh, it's a ratio between uh, the energy of the, the main uh, frequency and uh, the, the other harmonics. Just, uh, just this plot, the, the important thing in this plot is to, to see that, okay, if we, if we look at uh, each plot, the red points and the blue points are very different for each matrix. It means that the residential and commercial properties are already different, uh, described by that, uh, that particular matrix. So I won't go further for this uh, part, and we will focus on uh, the most inter interesting things I think of this talk is uh, what about the individual consumptions? So we, we have seen lots of statistics on total consumption. Now we'll concentrate on individual consumptions. What we have done here is we use also the public data set presented before. So PLED, COOL, which are high frequency uh, data sets, but for short duration. It's only like uh, five or 10 seconds of measurement. We also use the trace base uh, data set, which is a low frequency uh, data set, but for a really long duration. And we also use the private data set with high frequency and long duration, and especially with equipment from commercial buildings, which is not the case for uh, the plate and cool data set. What we have done here is uh, we modelize the current waveforms. And we try to figure out uh, a generic model that can represent all the equipment that we can find in a residential house or uh, in a big building. And uh, finally, we, uh, it enables us to, to, to propose a new device taxonomy. So let's start with uh, one important uh, thing in this uh, study is the matrix representation of current measurements. Here you have the typical current waveform. It's a time series indexed by the absolute time, tau. And what we have done is simply decompose the, the time tau with two other uh, variables, mainly the period index in green, the T. So it, it's the index of a voltage period. And the, simply, the sampling index in red is uh, the number of points within a voltage period. So with those uh, two variables, we can in fact reshape our current uh, time series into a matrix uh, observation. Basically, the, the, the columns of our matrix here corresponds to one period, one voltage period. So 20 milliseconds in, uh, in France, for instance. So it's, uh, it's this one. So we put every voltage period into this column. So now we, we have a nice representation of current and we can, we can already see some property of those observation. Here we can see that it's almost constant. All the columns looks very, very similar. So let's look at the, our main assumption and, and model for, uh, for individual current. It, it's called the matrix factorization for low rank representation. Here, the I, the I uh, matrix, it's the, the current as I've presented before. And we, want, we will uh, factorize this matrix as the, the matrix product of a signature matrix and an activation matrix here in red. And the number of columns and rows of the signature and activation matrices is represented by this K parameter, which is called the rank. So in fact, if the rank K is one, it's just uh, an outer product of two vectors because this, this matrix is only one column and this activation matrix will be only one row. But if we, uh, if we raise the, uh, this, uh, this K uh, parameter, we will have a true, um, a true uh, matrix uh, multiplication. So let's look at this first example. We have here a hair dryer. So on the, on, the, on the top left, we have the observation matrix. And then we, we see that this observation can be decomposed with only one signature and one activation. So it, it's the, the case where K equals one. And with those uh, signature and activation, we can reconstruct 
the observation very, very well. So in fact, this observation is just the multiplication of this signature by this activation along the time. And we can see that this activation is either zero or constant during the time. A more complex example is a microwave. A microwave, we, we can see that the observation is more variable and we can see two states. And in fact, we, uh, with our uh, modelization, we can also see those two states. We have this orange state and this blue state. The, um, the blue state is activated at the beginning of the, of the observation and the orange uh, signature is activated only at the end of our activation, of, the, of our observation. So it means that we need two signatures, but with simple activations, it means that activations that are mostly uh, 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 zero or constant. If we go to uh, another uh, case, for lightings, for example, those kinds of plots, I think we, we, you, you don't have this in uh, residential buildings. Because here, it's the, the aggregate of like hundred or thousands of lightings in a big building. So that's why the, uh, the observation matrix is very variable. But even if the, the observation is very variable, we can see that we only need one signature and one activation to reconstruct very well this observation. And we, we see here that the activation is not constant anymore and is very uh, variable. And finally, the most complex uh, device uh, we, we can uh, see in the nature uh, is, uh, for instance, this one is an air handling unit. The observation is also very va varying. But here we can see that we need four signatures and four activations to reconstruct very well the, the observation. So it means that this device is very, very complex. And to summarize, here we, uh, I've plotted the, the rank K that we need for all the devices I had uh, in my uh, database to reconstruct uh, the, the signal. So we can see that for lots of them, we only need one, uh, one signature. They are mostly uh, devices that you can find in residential homes. And here, from here, you have uh, devices that need two or more signatures to be reconstructed. And basically, for this one, there are lift, uh, split, uh, air handling unit, all those devices that you find in big buildings and not that much in residential homes. And this is why we where we funded our uh, low rank assumption for devices that uh, the, the, the individual current observation for, individ for devices has a low rank representation. And uh, this is the device, device taxonomy uh, I started to explain. In fact, if we, if we uh, break down all the devices between those where the activation is simple, it means that either zero or constant, or complex, that it, mean, it means that it, vary, it varies a lot during the time. And we can also break down bit, uh, with the number of signatures we need to reconstruct them. We can have those four categories of devices, which the on-off or constant device, the multi-state device, which are well-known devices in the residential community. But we also have the varying load devices and the varying signature uh, devices like our air handling unit. Um, now, what about a, similar, uh, a model for an entire building? It's quite simple, in fact. Uh, we just use uh, the model for our device uh, we, I just presented, the factorization model. F and we represent also a category, um, a category uh, model, which is the sum of similar devices in a building. For instance, you have uh, thousands of lights or hundreds of computers in the buildings. So all of them are a category. And finally, uh, the building model is just the sum of different categories in the building. And those two uh, models, the category and building, are just given by the Kirchhoff law because it's, we are just summing the currents uh, of uh, individual devices. So 
this is what uh, the final model looks like. Uh, for simulating, we just choose the number of category, we choose the number of devices per category, we choose then the rank of the devices inside the category, and then we need to simulate signatures and activations. I won't go into details for this part, it's a bit too long for, for today, but uh, all the details are in, uh, in a paper I will, uh, I will show you at the end. And uh, finally, we, uh, we uh, open sourced uh, a, a data set which is comprised of eight buildings for two weeks of data per building. We have the total consumption for um, current and voltage, and we have also uh, individual power consumption for each category. The sampling rate is 200 points per voltage period, and we, we give uh, one period every 30 seconds. The address for the, uh, for the test is here, but you will find also in the paper. This is just the, the metric devaluation um, of, uh, of the metrics for simulations compared to real buildings. So we can see that they share the same property with commercial buildings and not with uh, residential buildings. And to conclude, I've presented to you a new device taxonomy based on a factorization model, which is a generic uh, model for all the devices you can find. Uh, and we, I also presented the shared data set, which is, uh, I made it for evaluating NIM algorithm. And if you need more details, you can find it in this paper, Generative Model for Non-Intrusive Load Monitoring in Commercial Buildings, in the Energy and Buildings uh, Journal uh, of last year. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you for your attention.